Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isratel here again for Renaissance Periodization. I suppose when I'm on the channel, that's who I'm gonna be repping. Today, let's talk about effective versus optimal because I get a ton of questions through various forms of social media and of course YouTube of like, hey, does the following diet practice or training practice work? Does five by five work? Does, you know, the keto diet work? And other questions of like, hey, what's optimal? And if I want my best results, what do I do? And a lot of times those are really, really intertwined. And in fact, they shouldn't be as intertwined. There's a very big difference between works and optimal. And we're gonna make sure to try to kind of parse that out and give you guys some pretty good recommendations of how to approach your fitness goals. So first we're gonna define what works means. When someone says like, hey, like this works or it works for me, like what exactly technically, this is a nerdy lecture, what do they mean by works? Secondly, when people say optimal, what exactly is optimal? What is the difference between works and optimal? And then lastly is kind of the sort of applied part of the lecture is, can you still do X, Y, Z approach? Can you still do the diet you wanted or the training you wanted? Where on the spectrum it lies between works and optimal, depending on where, there's your answer. So let's get right into it. How do we define that something works? It's not a very difficult definition. Any, in this case, we'll just use diet and training as an example. This applies to almost everything else in life. Any diet or training intervention that produces measurable results in a certain evaluation period. Okay, so you're saying, okay, we're looking, we're gonna do this thing. We have this time after we do the thing to see if it does anything. And any measurable deviation towards the benefit side, it technically works, right? Now notice works is a very general concept. We're not saying it works really well. We're not saying it works poorly. We're just saying it works at all, right? And here's one of these situations where works gets muddled and it really shouldn't. And the reason it gets muddled is because people of different experience levels are asking about it. For beginners, almost everything works, which is why you have like P90X ads and all these weird ads for all these supplements and shakes and meal replacements and weird workout programs. If you just apply some resistance training to people, if you just apply some kind of caloric constraint to people that are beginners, they're gonna get leaner, they're gonna get bigger, they're gonna get stronger. So almost everything works, right? For intermediates, that's not really the story. For intermediates, some stuff starts to not work so well, and some st stuff might not really work at all for intermediates anymore, while other stuff still works either pretty well or to some extent. Lastly, for advanced individuals who tend to be the wisest and most experienced as well, they've been through enough alterations and iterations of various things and various uh, strategies and tactics and products and solutions they've tried that they, by the time they get very advanced, have known things to work before, but those things may not work anymore. And as a matter of fact, for advanced people, maybe most stuff that they try doesn't actually work, which is to say it doesn't produce measurable results that takes them further on the road of where they wanna go. So, you know, for example, if you're a beginner and you run like the small off squat routine, for sure you're getting stronger. If you're an intermediate, it depends on your ability to recover. If you uh, have great genetics or lifestyle for recovery, you're gonna get a lot of the small routine it's gonna work really well. If you have poor genetics or lifestyle for recovery, it may not work for you. So the, for intermediates, it's sometimes a little bit more 50-50. And then for advanced people, there's very few advanced people get anything out of small off because usually they can't recover at that rate. They need to radically alter either the rest of their program or the way they implement whatever version of small off they think they're doing. So. Advanced people are in this sort of situation where they have to start looking harder and harder and harder for the stuff that actually works. Just works at all. We're not even saying optimal yet. Now, what is optimal? Optimal isn't just the stuff that works. It's the very best of what works. So optimal is the approach that gets the most measurable results during that defined evaluation time period that we're asking, okay, did we lose the fat? Three months later after a fat loss diet, how much fat did we lose? The program that gets us the most possible fat loss is the closest to optimal, right? And optimal is constrained very, very heavily by at least three things. It is individuality, situationality, and chronology. So those are real fancy words. Let's break that shit down into simple shit. So first, if you have whatever kind of genetics and whatever kind of training history, the optimal split for you, for example, may be a little bit different than the optimal split is for somebody else because you're a different individual with a different history. So all of a sudden, optimal is not the same answer for everyone. 
Secondly, optimal can be a different answer based on your situation. You may be in a situation in which you have four hours a week to train. The optimal split looks very different than if your situation is one in which you have eight hours a week to train. Because imagine someone writes you the optimal program, it's six hours a week of training. If you have eight hours to train, uh, you could do more and benefit, or at least take longer breaks between lifts and benefit. If you were trained for four hours a week, you only have four hours to train, but someone writes you a six hour program, either you're cramming that shit in so much it's not optimal anymore, or you don't even do the whole program and it's for sure not optimal anymore. So the situation definitely matters and people, even for the same genetics and training history, situations can change, thus optimal can change. And it depends on your chronology. So if you want to say, get as jacked as possible within a year, let's say you have a really big, you're an actor, let's pretend, uh, maybe you are an actor, who knows, I can't judge the viewer. If you're an actor and you have this mega role coming up and filming starts in a year, you need to get as jacked and lean as possible. What's optimal for you to do that whole rest of the year may be very different than what's optimal for someone that, for example, has a 10-year time horizon of I want to be the best bodybuilder I can be in 10 years. Just as a quick example, if someone wants to be the best bodybuilder they can be in 10 years, two things come to mind instantly. One, they do tons of compound hardcore heavy moves for the first year, very little isolation work, very little small muscle group work, because who gives a shit? You're supposed to build the basic foundation before you get into that stuff. And for that person who has a 10-year time horizon, optimal may mean either very limited mini cutting or almost no cutting at all, just straight gaining for a year, slow and steady gain is probably the best way, even just maintaining and building up muscle reducing fat or just gaining is a real good idea. Whereas if your job is to become jacked and lean and you have a year to do it, like a good fraction of that year, probably towards the tail end, last three or four months, maybe even last five or six, is going to be cutting and only the first part is going to be gaining. So if your training partner is someone who has a role in Hollywood in a year that they have to be as jacked and lean as possible for, and you just started training with them, but your goal is to be as good as you can jacked and lean wise in 10 years, you're going to bifurcate real quick. And nobody can say like, well, what? shouldn't you both be doing the optimal program? Well, that's a very different program because you're in a different chronology of one when you want to peak. So that's optimal. Now, what is the difference between optimal and what works? And for this, I'd like to bring your attention to this chart that you're seeing there. This is my artistry. I was trained, not only, um, you guys already know, I was formally trained in cuisine. That's what we chefs call cooking. And I was also trained in Juilliard, we'll say, as an artist. So here's my art. And it's all a spectrum, okay? What works is on the right-hand side of that spectrum. And works goes all the way from just north of pointless, which is to say doesn't work at all, but doesn't hurt you, all the way through pretty effective, like works pretty well, all the way and ends at optimal. However, that spectrum for just sort of full learning experience here goes the other way too, because not everything you do is at worst pointless. Some things actually make you quite a bit worse if you do them, and other things are maximally regressive, which means they make you as whatever it is you want, they make you as bad as possible at it. Quick example, because this is all theoretical, let's say we have fat loss, okay? At the tail end on the very left-hand side, what's the worst possible thing you can do for fat loss? And remember, worse is negative. It's not just no fat loss, fat gain. So if you stuff yourself every hour of just as much junk as you can eat, that's the maximally regressive thing to do as far as a fat loss diet program, okay? On the training side, of course, you wouldn't be moving at all, but we're not talking about training, just diet. You just stuff yourself every hour with snack cakes and potato chips, and you'll be as fat as possible, and that's as worse as you can get. On the other hand, sort of towards the middle of bad, still net negative, is doing a crappy fad diet, burning out, rebounding, and gaining some fat. Lots of people do this. Very few people try to lose fat by stuffing themselves every hour, but plenty of people try to lose fat with stupid diets. They get crazy hungry, crazy burnt out, have no recourse at all towards what a sustainable dieting practice looks like, and just go back to shitty habits and get even fatter. Okay, so that's not the worst thing that can happen because it's not going to make you as fat as possible, but it sure is going to make you fatter than you were. So it's kind of in the middle of that left side of the spectrum. In the middle is pointless, which is something like a body wrap. Like if you do body wraps or whatever, someone wraps you up and they're like, this is soaked with tea leaves and really drains the chi out of you or whatever fucking somehow makes you leaner. It fucking doesn't do that at all. But short of like costing you whatever, how much money it costs, it doesn't make you fatter. Well, I sure as hell hope not. That would be a nasty discovery. So body wraps don't make you fatter. They don't make you any better. So it's pointless right there in the middle. And then, of course, 
There, we've now entered just north of pointless. We've entered into things that actually work. Now, all things work equally. So if you do pure, if it's your macros, it's a great way to go about things, but you miss out on some details. So it's not the optimal way. If you do pure clean eating, there's brown rice, chicken, and broccoli or whatever, you miss out on some, uh, some opportunities to lose some fat, but uh, it works pretty well. So that's kind of sort of step one of like works decently. Then things that work really well is like evidence-based dieting practices, all the stuff you learn on this channel, Jeff Nippert's channel, all the other awesome YouTube channels and, and all the other uh, ways you can learn and buy textbooks and stuff. And if you're really good at science and you're really good at dieting practice, you fuse those together, you get an awesome approach that really just checks all the boxes. And then optimal is something far off in the future, future discoveries of evidence-based dieting practices that can really, really, really make you just lose as much fat as human possible, right? As far as diet is concerned. So there's that whole spectrum. Notice there's a difference between works and optimal that we can see kind of in the real world or even different degrees of works. Someone could say, hey, I did IFOM. It works for me. The response isn't like, great, that's perfect. The response is actually like, that's really good that you got results. Have you considered making your practice not just if it fits your macros, but a little bit more evidence-based? For example, taking in food palatability into account and satiety. And if you took a protein shake and eat a Pop-Tart, you may be hungry in an hour. If you have some other foods that are like potatoes, lots of broccoli, lots of lean meats that are hard to chew, if you have that stuff and it's not crazy flavored super well, you may eat the same calories as the protein shake and Pop-Tart, technically getting you the same fat loss goals, but you don't get hunger for four hours unless you can sustain a lower, a bigger deficit for longer and get even leaner, right? So there's different degrees of works uh, of what works all the way from just north of pointless all the way through optimal, right? So in the end, this theory is all nice and interesting, but can you still do X, Y, Z approach? Because a lot of folks will message myself and Renaissance periodization and say, hey, I, I want to do this diet or I want to do this training method. What do you think, right? And uh, so, for example, they say, I like keto or I like starting strength or I like, you know, high intensity training. Um, can I still do it? The answer is definitely yes, as long as you meet two criteria. The first one is you're okay with the pace of results, okay? Your starting strength is going to get you a certain level of strength and muscularity and fat loss at a certain pace. If you're okay with that pace, for sure do starting strength. Second point is, if you're okay with a potential outcome of whatever thing you chose to be less than optimal, to potentially be less than optimal, okay? Because you're not looking for the optimal thing. You're not taking, cobbling together from various strategies and making your best effort at optimal. That was is really likely to get you very, very far. But if you're like, look, I don't really care so much about optimal. I just want something that works pretty well. I'm okay with the pace of results I'm getting and I'm totally okay to do keto. I know keto is not optimal, but it works pretty well for me and it's super simple. Can I do it? Well, if you're okay with the pace of results keto gets you, and you're okay with the final outcome being maybe not the most fat loss, maybe not the best sustainability, maybe not the best final results, but something decent, then that's totally cool. And if at some point you decide that either one of those points, A and B, pace of results, or potentially missing out on stuff, if you think that no longer applies to you, if you want a little bit better, then you have to modify your current method, which means you have to move on that spectrum for wherever that method works, slightly towards optimal. So you may were you were doing keto and you realized, you know, keto's working well, but my workouts and my lifting isn't going so great. I don't have pumps. I don't have a ton of energy. This could be better. So what you do is you still do keto. It's the still same diet plan you were, except you take a little bit of fats out of your day, make a, yourself a, a nice calorie buffer, same calories as before, just lower fats. You reintroduce those calories as carbs, pre-training and post-training. All of a sudden you have way more energy, way more pumps, way more recovery, way more muscularity over the long term, and you've moved from ketos, works, which is right there in the middle, it works fine, to lose fat and you know maybe retain muscle, and you moved just a little closer to optimal, and eventually if this isn't good for you anymore, you can move closer and closer and closer until you're in pure evidence-based diet doing your best possible job. Give that some thought, and if you hate it, downvote the fuck out of this video, but comment for the algorithm. See you guys next time.